all right all right so here I am and I'm finally going to get started on a long-awaited project one I've been wanting to do for a long time uh, I'm going to work on this Suzuki carry over here now in a previous video uh, I did an intro to it when I very first picked that thing up and wheeled it back here we kind of reviewed it and went through some point some points that you know I knew it needed a lot of work and the things that stuck out in my mind it was uh, of course it needed a battery the distributor cap and rotor were missing completely so I needed one of those at least and uh, the radiator hoses were were junked I mean they were literally just falling apart you know all cracked and uh, so those needed to be replaced and I noticed when I had I can't remember if I put a battery on it or with my jump starter or just a jump starter on it but it was really really hard to turn the engine over so those are the main things that worried me about this um, now it's been a while so you know in the meantime I did manage to pick up a distributor and when I was looking at the distributors uh, first I was just looking for a distributor cap and and rotor but man they were super expensive I mean just for a, a little bitty A little bitty plastic cap I mean this is only a three cylinder right for that little thing and a rotor you know it's like 70 75 bucks or something like that or even higher I can't remember I mean I just thought it was outrageous but uh, but I did manage to get this one uh, shipped in overseas out of Hong Kong I believe it was and uh, so I just got the whole distributor for the same price as if I would have bought the cap and the rotor uh, from a dealer here and I understand why the why they're so expensive. I mean, they're uh, this isn't a mainstream vehicle. I mean, they're you, you see plenty of them around here starting to, and these guys that are dealing with this uh, and selling parts. I mean, they're having to get all these parts shipped over, uh, a lot of shipping and handling, and they're they're not mainstream, so sales probably aren't that high. So the markup's pretty high on them, you know. But I did manage to uh, at least get that. The radiator hoses, I didn't look that hard. I just kind of just looked around a little bit, but I did not replace those yet. See right here, this big, I mean, a whole chunk of it's there. If you start, you can see it's just cracking under, under pressure here. So the battery... Well, it's underneath here. I'm gonna try to use a, a, a lawn tractor battery to get it going. A lawn tractor battery plus my jumper should give it enough. The uh, distributor's back here. I'm gonna access it once I take this panel off. But you can see I, my projects are overflowing into the bed of this thing, so I just need to clean up, make some room, and we'll be able to get started on this. What do you say, Gertie? Mm -hmm. All right. Kind of late in the day, but might as well start prepping everything and getting ready for it. But uh, I'll go ahead and take this cover off. what we're looking at and yeah so this you can see here's the distributor easy access there I hope everything else is in decent shape you know you just never know I don't know what uh, if this engine is going to be able to run or not so yeah so here's where the battery box is and you can see here's positive here's the grounding cable this I think yeah they just ran this up into the cab uh, for for more power up there for something but uh, 
this is all pretty rusted up. I think I'm going to, uh, you know, cut these off and put some larger size eye connectors on there so that I can connect the uh, lawn tractor battery a little easier. And we'll see if that will work. All right, so I put some new ends on these. They were kind of big. I just crimped them on. I guess I'll solder them later. Contact on, on the battery. And this is one I just pulled off from one of my lawn tractor batteries. It's only 275 cold cranking amps. I don't know if that's going to be enough to, and we can give it a, a quick crank and see what happens. All right, the battery's hooked up down there. Had to move some of my stuff out of the way. Let's see what happens when we turn the key on. Well, I heard the fuel pump. Nice, it's turning over. Nice, nice. a good sign I was thinking the, the cylinders were gonna be and I didn't hear any any clanking you know there's there's no other noise there's no you don't hear hear any uh, stuck valves or anything like that so I know there's not gonna be a spark of course because I have not put the distributor on yet the new one so that's what I'll do. All right, so here's our distributor. Here's the new one. Not quite exact, but almost. We've got a different, uh, a different plug here. That needs to be connected here somehow. I don't know. This has two leads. This one just has one. Needs to be a 12 millimeter. off here there we go and how does this line up I don't see any uh see any alignment marks or anything to uh, take the cap off and see if I can rotate it from up here while I'm trying to insert it see if that makes a difference 
I don't see any alignment marks, so even though I might get sparked, the timing might be way, way off for all I know. There it goes. I just had to be a little more forceful with it. Alright, that went in. Let's put the cap back on. Man, how are mosquitoes still out here? It's November, damn it. November 25th, the mosquitoes are still out here, those bastards. So, before I do anything, I'm going to check the plugs, at least one of them. See what it looks like. See what the plug looks like and then I'll probably uh, see if we're going to get any spark out of this thing. Come on. All right, finally got it out. I just had to get my needle nose and grab the tip. But, uh, whew, look how black that is on the tip. Good plugs. NGKs. Oh well, got it off. Let's uh, let's put it somewhere where we can see and see if we get any spark. This camera is teetering here on uh, on the side here. If I can reach the key. No spark. So I'm trying to figure out why I wasn't getting any spark. And first thing, of course, here's that brown lead that goes from uh, the distributor. On the distributor it's two leads but there's only one lead on that cable there. And so I was going to check the, the coil which is right here but you can see when I started digging it up it's like well holy crap look at all these the whole cable has been stripped apart and I don't know if it's burned. I don't think it's burned, but uh, but here is that brown lead that goes to the distributor. Then there was this lead. I have no idea. It's just there. And then this looks like a capacitor or something that has just been totally uh, stripped away or fried or something. So. So, I guess I'll do a little research, see if there's any way I can test this coil and look up and look up a wiring diagram to find out what's going on here in the in this little corner. But I'm sure that's why there's no spark. So, I am at a dilemma right now. Um, the closer I look at the at the vehicle and the engine and everything, the more work it seems that it needs. You know what I mean? 
I know I'm not getting sparks. I'm not having to research the coil. Uh, there's cables that have been stripped and uh, arguably I don't think they were burned, but you know, I don't know why they've been stripped like they are. Um, dug a little further, of course, the radiator hoses, we saw that, but looking at the radiator, um, I'm going to fill it up and see if it leaks anywhere, which I think it does. So the radiator's in question. What else? Well, let's take a look. So all that there. Uh, carburetor I haven't looked at, but looking at these hoses, I mean, they're just deteriorated. Um, I can't squeeze them or they'll break. I think the radiator is rusted. Um, not sure on the transmission yet. Uh, what else did I see under here? That muffler has a huge hole in it, so I think uh, the exhaust is questionable. At least the muffler. The gas tank, I am totally not sure about. Uh, I saw a couple of spots under there, but it might be in good shape. I just don't know yet. What I want to do is to at least get this sucker running, and then I can you know check the transmission and all that good stuff and and see if it'll roll and then check the brakes and everything like that but engine wise it's going to need a lot so I'm leaning towards uh, converting this over to electric do an EV project on it I think that'd be really cool I mean there's obviously uh, a lot of space for batteries back here you know that I could rig something up maybe back here make it look like almost like a toolbox and the batteries up here put the motor in here and adapt it to uh, so that I can use the transmission so that I'll have two-wheel drive four-wheel drive uh, in reverse uh, what else I, I think that'd be a very cool project because I have a feeling a lot of these cables and electric wise uh, they're going to be need needed to be replaced too everything like that the cables and the plastic everything in here seems pretty brittle so I'm leaning towards that way looking at the shape of this vehicle I think I'm gonna call it the Pezla and actually that will be a cross between a Tesla and a Pez dispenser <laughs> doesn't that look like a Pez dispenser So that would be kind of cool. I'm leaning towards doing that, but first I do want to get this engine running, if ever so briefly, just to check out the transmission, you know. And uh, but we'll keep going. Well, all right. Well, I guess that's it for this video, because uh, it is actually the day before Thanksgiving. And you can see we've had these ribs and a couple of turkeys on the smoker here and I'm ready to chow down. So once again, uh, thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and watch for the next video on the new Pezla project.